Good Thursday morning to you. When I was young as a child, I noticed that often the pastor, before giving the sermon, would read the gospel text and then say these words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing in your sight, my Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Throughout growing up as a high school student and a college student, it didn't seem to matter what church I attended or even the variations of denomination. Often these words would be spoken. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say it was later that I found out these words come from Psalm 19. It's a beautiful reflection of how we are to speak into what God is doing. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in our sight, in your sight, our Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Think about that. Think about everything that you say and do. It's easy to designate that this is an entrance to a sermon because obviously we expect and hope that everything that comes out in a sermon is pleasing to God. But, but what about in our daily life? What about in our interactions? What about with our family or friends or even worse, what about with people that we don't really like? Do we have the same prayer, the same cause for concern? May the words of our, our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing Boy, that gets a little tricky for me, and I don't know about you, but I can think of a lot of relationships where that would be a no-brainer, but then other relationships where I'd really struggle with that. Even more, when you look at Psalm 19, the beginning of the psalm has an interesting juxtaposition. The first two verses of Psalm 19 say this, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They have no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. and the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. Think about that. In God's creation, nothing needs to speak a word to be reflective of God's glory. That's exactly how God created it. And then if you think of you and I are part of God's creation, you and I are created in the image of God. There's very little that we can say. There's very little that we can add to what God is already doing. It kind of takes the pressure off, doesn't it? What if the only words that were to leave our lips were ones that gave praise and honor and glory to what God has revealed to us, what God was doing within us? What if it was far less about us and simply about God? where we wrestle with how God's at work and where we come to God seeking his understanding and wisdom. If the heavens and the earth do not need to say a word to proclaim God's glory, then the pressure is off on us. Maybe just by our actions and our presence, we reflect a God who is at work, loving and caring, challenging and encouraging. I love how this psalm begins with the essence of humanity, with the reality of creation, not needing to say a word. And yet it ends with so often the preacher coming to God and asking that words and meditation would be pleasing. See, we live somewhere in that chasm, don't we? Before we say a word and at the end of everything that we've said, we want God to be in all of it. We want God to be fueling what we say and how we react. We want God to be guiding us and directing us. And that's the beauty of faith. So whether we're silent or we speak, if Christ is at the center, if God is the fullness in within us, then hopefully our prayer is that everything we do is pleasing in God's sight. As we end this week, I, I encourage you to think a little bit about the words of your mouth, the meditation of your heart. Where do you find God in the midst of it? Do you ask it to be pleasing? Do you hide it and hope God doesn't notice? I have to confess, I'm usually somewhere bouncing back before between the two of those. But at the end of the day, I really do want nothing that I say, but everything that I example, everything that God is working within me to give glory and honor to him. I hope that as we navigate a time of Lent, as we continue to be self-reflective, we realize the power of our faith. It changes everything about us. It changes how we speak. It changes how we live. It changes how we just appreciate the fullness of God's glory among us. I hope you have a great Thursday.